Okay, well, I made the video series with the understanding that I'm never going to really be famous for it as far as in my own lifetime. Um, in my own lifetime, um, I'm not going to get paid any money for it. Um, not going to really get any women from it. Actually, I have had one woman contact me who's beautiful and we talked for a while, but it didn't work out. She was far away. But So I, I understood that, you know, there's nothing that I'm going to get out of it. You know, the things that other people do, other conspiracy theorists like Alex Jones, they have their sponsors and, you know, they make they make a, 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 a wage, you know, a living salary, um, giving, giving you the facts all the time. And, and they have sponsors and, you know, like the gold sponsors and the um, Berkey, Berkey filters and um, I forgot, you know, I haven't listened to it in like years, and now it shows me years uh, on his radio show. I just seen him on uh, videos on the internet, you know, just seeing other people's opinion. So, basically, anyway, going back to the question, the reason why I made these videos uh, is not, you know, because I wanted money or fame or women or. I wanted people to think I'm smart, or none, none of that, none of that nature. You know, uh, most people in my family haven't seen any videos. You know, some people finally might have seen one or two videos. I didn't do it to impress anybody I know. I didn't do it to, for any any of those reasons. I did it because I've done I've done something, one major thing in my life that I really regret, and I felt that I had to repent. And at the same time, I wanted to do the right thing, and also get at my enemies who had done my people wrong historically for many years and I wanted to truly expose how they think and what they do because ever since the slave times when you know they would conspire with the cops and the judges and the lawyers and you know, the coroner and everybody would be in on the conspiracy against black people but all of a sudden people think that white people just love black people and all of a sudden stop conspiring you know to me it's just fucking stupid and I had to address that next question Well, I'm getting tired of addressing this uh, uh, this whole crip question. Okay, you know I'm not a gangster. I'm not an active gang member. Okay, I was I was I did join a gang when I was younger as a teenager, but you know those days are in my past. You know, um, I gave you the story in the last video. You're gonna have to go to that. You know, if you really want to know the details, go to that last video where we did the question and answer session in the 2013 Illuminati series. And so I'm not gonna get into that you know, anymore. I've already touched on that. You know, I told you what hood I hung out in and all this stuff. It's all my songs, it's all my videos, it's all everywhere. Okay? And the other part of that question is the other races, you know, the the blacks and the, and the Samoans and the Asians and, and all, you know, who how they get respect on the streets as Crips. Yeah, they have respect. No, it's yes and no. Yeah, they got respect from some black people. Like me, I'm, I'm not a racist. You know, man earns respect by doing what he does. I'm more likely to respect black people because I can relate to them. But people from other cultures earn my respect all the time. So, you know, so yeah, they're, they're respected. You know, let's take the Samoans, for instance, right? I, I have a few Samoan friends, and, you know, I don't hang out with many of my friends anymore in general. So I don't hang out with them as well. But, you know, growing up, I saw that they, they liked a lot of the same things I did, and some of them thought kind of similar to I, the way I thought, and, you know, when I played basketball sometimes, it was in some of their neighborhoods, and so, and, and just being, going through world history, you know, that's why I speak on Samoans in some of my songs, you know, some Samoan guy asked me, what does this have to do with Samoans? You know, I don't represent for the Samoans, I don't speak uh, on behalf of them, you know what I'm saying? I'm not, I'm not in a Samoan gang, I'm not clicked up, you know, per se, directly on the streets, like, fucking with them all the time, no, but I got respect for them because I, in, in reading history and hearing Samoan independence and, and how that, is one, uh, uh, I forgot the guy's name, is this famous tribal, tribal leader, he had screamed out, um, you know, I put it in one of my playlists, but he screamed out, peace, you know, peace for Samoa, and he, he was killed, you know, by the colonists, and so, reading about their demonstrations and their history and a little bit about their tribal culture, you know, I, I had a certain respect. And seeing, seeing their struggle when they come to America, you know, I, I had a certain respect for them on that, you know. And I'm not going to speak on that either because, you know, I'm not in, on anybody's dick or anything like that, you know. It's just, 
I got respect for some cultures more than other cultures, and that's all that is. That's why I bring up some cultures more than other cultures, like Asian cultures, African cultures, obviously, you know, etc., etc. One last question. A little more long question and answers uh, videos. Well, my videos are more are more of a factual presentation. The only thing I've ever got wrong in my videos is when I got carried away and I tried to predict the Republican primary. I tried to predict one candidate wrong, then the next, and the next, okay? I wasn't necessarily wrong about Iran, but if I was going to say there was two things, you know, the second would be Iran, and when I felt that we were going to escalate going to war. But we are escalating to war, it's just not as quickly as I figured at that point. So as far as my opposition view, if they can't point out anything that I'm wrong about definitively, 1,500 videos later, four years later, and that's just on YouTube alone, not to mention the, all the debates I won 11 years before that, growing up, going to chat rooms like Yahoo and American Online, and going to meet people at the library, and you know, just debating people, debating family members, anybody who would, who would want to talk history. So one of my best friends is a major history buff. He's a teacher, and we debate about it. And he he's not he doesn't believe that the Illuminati wields that kind of control. He thinks that they died during that era in, well, in 1776. You know, and he believes you know, that that when Weishaupt was uh, banished, that that's the end of it. And so, you know, I basically addressed all the opposition view. Everybody I've ever debated, I've addressed their key points. They haven't addressed mine. Okay? And if that wasn't the case, how come all they can say is, oh, one group couldn't wield that much power? They really don't know how it works. They, all they go on is, the, you know, their problem is they read the same kind of history books over and over again, right? They read the same books that are, not the same exact books, but the same kind of books, where they're telling the story in a similar way. So it's brainwashed and well ingrained in their mind that this is how it went, this is how it went. And the things like the secret societies that surrounded that era, they're briefly mentioned in every book. They don't really explore that part of it. They explore the weapons part of it, the history, um, the different individuals. One thing that people, historians are big on is the individuals and the individuals' lives, their life story. To me, most of the time, yeah, that's relevant, but that's not as relevant as the money changing hands, who's profiting from the war, you know, the motives for going to war. When any police goes into any investigation, any detective goes into any investigation, they look at who has a motive to do this stuff, you know, who, who has the gain from this, who's going to benefit from this happening. So when a mass murder event takes place, you should ask yourselves, who, who's gaining massively from this mass murder event, a.k.a. war? And it's global corporations, global banks. You know, don't just look at the immediate effect of it. Look at the trend, the change in business trends. You know, I pointed out how the this guy, um, who was the former head of the World Bank till 2005, in one of my videos in the Illuminati series, how he was pointing out that the World Bank was the major institution responsible for the change in the GDP, that the, the third world countries will now produce more of the GDP in the future. What he failed to mention is that his banker buddies will still make just as much money, if not more, in the future because they control the businesses that are going to start producing. For example, when China invested in Nigeria, in Lagos, and they started building things there and building up the infrastructure and trying to supply Africa, you know, with more gross domestic product. But who's, who, who are the people, who are the main investors? They're Chinese Freemasons. They're, they're European Freemasons. Look at companies like the Beers. Well, I, I went way over. I wasn't supposed to make this video this long. But basically, I addressed your questions thoroughly.